Hello, I'm Keith Ford, and welcome to this edition of From the Vault. Today I have my Polish Radom VIS WZ35. The VIS WZ35 was produced by FB Radom from 1936 to 1939, and then after the German invasion of Poland, it was produced again under German control from 1939 to the end of the war in 1945, whenever Russia took over control of Poland and virtually destroyed the factory. This is the handgun of a Polish Army officer. Not as clumsy or random as a Walther P-38, this is an elegant weapon of a more civilized age. The Polish military was interested in updating their handguns to a more modern sidearm and had looked at various different ones along the way. Engineers had looked at the 1903 Colt, which was in 380, 1911, and engineers had also been to FM Belgium and during the time they had noticed a new handgun that FM was producing which would soon become the FN High Power. But soon after things went south with FM Belgium due to a licensing agreement on the WZ-28 which would be the 8mm version of the BAR, uh, FB Radom pretty much cut all ties with FN and decided to go their own way in producing their own handgun. After several different trials of different handguns, the Polish military decided on 9mm instead of 380 and went with a homegrown design which incorporated several different aspects of the 1911, the 1903 Colt, and the Browning High Power. So now let's take a look inside and see what all those designs are. So first, drop the magazine. First off, you'll notice that the mag catch is pretty much the same as the 1911 even to the screw back here in the spring inside. Now to strip this down, first we'll check and make sure that everything is clear. Now there's a takedown lever over here on this side. Bring it back, put it in that notch. Now the slide stop right here, you do not want to force that out. You can go down about that far and that's about it. The key to the getting that out is pull this guide rod forward let that fall out. Grab hold of that there, release the lever, and the slide is separated from the frame. Now in here, we'll rotate the guide rod, pull the barrel out. She's disassembled. Now if you take a look at the barrel, you'll see quite a bit of similarities between this and a Browning High Power. The hood up here at the top, the lug, Lock and lug right here. There's an awful lot of similarities and they picked up on that. Now a very unique piece about this is the captive spring guide rod. This is a one piece guide rod system and won't be seen for several years on handguns but this right here in 1935 was way ahead of its time. It also acts as a recoil reducer as well. Spring inside there. Frame quite similar to a Browning High Power as well, the way that the barrel locks in right there. And it uses a Browning lockup system as well. Barrel bushing is press fit into the slide, unlike a 1911, which is removable. This is actually pressed in and has a little pin that goes through, but as nice and as well crafted as these are, you can never see the pin that's in there. Now, pre-World War II had some very interesting markings on these guns. And you can see here some of the proof marks and the acceptance stamps. Well, right here, as well as reverse swastikas. Unfortunately, as the Russians destroyed the factory, any and all records of these guns were destroyed at the same time, so trying to decipher these is kind of like Egyptian hieroglyphics. It's, you just really don't know what these are. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting to see all these markings and see what was done and what they actually stood for and represented. So now let's reassemble the handgun. Drop the slide in. Take our recoil spring in here, and you'll rotate that down to the barrel. Stick this onto the frame. To reinstall the slide stop, drop this in the hole right here. 
and you'll notice where it stops right there. Reach up, grab the guide rod, pull that forward. It'll drop in just like that. Now you'll see some guys trying to force these out, force them back in. You don't want to do that. The way that the guide rod is made and designed is that it is capturing this slide stop and puts force on it. And relieve that force, just pull that out and you're good to go. Now then, pull this back. She's ready to go. Now, a very unique feature of this and was way ahead of its time was the hammer drop safety on top of the slide. You see right here, and that drops that. What that does is that pushes the firing pin inside the slide and clears it away from the hammer as well. And also this incorporates a 1911 style grip safety. Now another unique feature about this is the slot back here for a stock. But due to the invasion of Poland by Germany in 1939, that just never came to pass. Now after the invasion of Poland in 1939 by Germany, uh, pistols started changing up a little bit. The first thing to go was the Polish Eagle right here, the crest. Then the finish of the gun went from a nice rust blued finish to a more of a parkerized finish. And later on, the takedown lever right here would be removed just for simple simplification. And even though after Germany had taken over the FB Radom factory, production still continued and was actually run at FB Radom and then sent on to Steyr for final assembly and production. Uh, over the years, the quality went down, but this was actually the third highest used sidearm in the German military behind the P08 Luger and the Walther P38. And it is a very, very well thought out and very well made gun. And to me personally, this is the best sidearm of World War II right here. Now originally, whenever these were produced by Radom for the Polish military, this was a style holster that was issued with the gun. Fairly large, fit inside, was kind of loose. Had a slot for two magazines in here. And would have been carried or worn Sam Brown style. There was a strap that went across the shoulder right here. Now after the invasion of Poland by Germany, these were dropped and went to a more simpler style, which is uh, one of these right here. Magazine fit right there. That was it. This would be the most commonly encountered holster with these guns right here. The early style, this one is a reproduction, but early style holsters are almost as expensive as some of the guns are. This one right here is a very early 1936 production, one of the first 500 produced. And you'll notice a little Polish eagle right here. Those produced under the Polish government from 1936 to the invasion in 1939 were, were nicknamed Polish eagles. They were fairly hard to come by, fairly rare. The first 3,000 featured a alloy steel frame. And due to cost and expenses, they just decided to go to a regular carbon steel frame. These are very amazing shooters. The, the grip feels good, the gun feels good. It's just a very nice, very accurate and handy firearm. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again whenever we pull another gun from the vault.